bluegrass is, is different than, than a lot of other music. I like the music because it's, uh, it's pure. It's just you and your instrument. It's not a hokey thing. You know, it's not a hillbilly thing. It's for everybody. That's what bluegrass folks are. They're doctors and lawyers, and some of them are just plain down to earth country folks. You get stuck on this music. It just kind of gets under your skin and gets in your blood. From the first time that I heard the old banjo ring, you know, heard a man run a fiddle, I just fell in love with it. Everett's Music Barn is, it's a rare thing, you know. I, I suggest everybody needs to get out and come and experience it. It's amazing that the people that we have met over those 38 years. I consider them our family and friends. I really do. You know, you just bond with these people as friends and you're used to seeing their faces. It's just uh, one of the best places around this part of the country. Everybody, all the big bands call all the time trying to come through here and play. Nothing, nothing like it. That's where I learned how to play. That's where I grew up, and a lot of my, my old friends and everything that I grew up playing music with still go down there every Saturday night. There's some people around here lived in this area for 35 years and, did, and have been here and didn't know the place was here. And we have people that come that live, you know, 10 miles down the road, and they say, "Oh my God, I've been living here 15 years, and I never heard about this place." Out of all the places I've played, my favorite, if I had to name one over the years, is coming to the Everest Music Barn, Swanee, Georgia. I had one brother that got, uh, which actually is the reason why we started playing uh, all the time. Um, he was a Gwinnett County policeman in 1964 and was killed with two other police officers. We actually started playing a lot then uh, just to entertain our mother and dad, you know, and uh, kind of keep their mind off of stuff, you know. And we entered a uh, contest and we, we got second place in the Stars of the Mar contest with Freddie Miller, you know, back in the, the old days. And uh, our, actually our radio show came from that, you know, and we kept it for probably, oh, five or six years, I guess. Randall and Roger started playing first, and uh, they just played themselves for a little while, and they started going up to the radio station where they met more and more musicians, and they asked uh, my grandma and granddaddy if they could bring them back on Saturday night, which they said, sure, you know, invited to go by, you know, no drinking, not having a bunch of drunks in the house, Grandma said. I had a band back in the 60s, and we went up to uh, Hiawassee, Georgia, and there we met a young, very young band, a band, banjo player and guitar player by the name of Randall and Roger Everett. And later uh, they invited us to come over here to this place to pick. They started playing in this front room of the house and the uh, crowd kept getting big and there was a window in that uh, room and they took the window out and put the stage area out there and the stage kept getting bigger and bigger. And so they went down and got this old uh, building they had down the street here near Norcross. We did all up here on back of uh, pickup trucks, and we cut all the lumber and we built the barn, and we opened it in 1970, and uh, we've been playing here ever since. His mother sat inside there in a, in a rocking chair, and she was there every Saturday night. She loved the music. Uh, she never did go out to the barn. She stayed out here at the house all the time. But she was a good person, and she didn't tolerate anybody. Uh, that didn't act right, you know, when they came up here. Uh, they, she run them off in a hurry. <laughs> when we decided we was gonna do this, uh, mom and dad said that was fine with them and they'd support us in it and all, but they had rules and regulations that we had to go back. It was their home and that's the way they wanted it and that's the way it was kept over the years. Uh, for a long time, uh, my dad didn't like people with real long hair, you know. And uh, of course, a lot of people his age was like that, you know. And uh, his mom didn't like uh, ladies to wear shorts and sundresses, you know. Somebody that she knew came up here, and they, we hadn't seen him in a long time, and the, and the hair was pretty long, you know. And uh, she actually cut his hair, really did. And uh, and and men would come with shorts on, you know, and stuff. And uh, 
if we had a pair of pants that would fit them, you know, they'd, we'd let them have a pa pants to put on, you know. They, they didn't allow any drinking or anything up here, and uh, they strictly enforced that <laughs> every Saturday night. So anybody that came up and, and uh, did any of those things, they, they were for sure they were gonna be gone. <laughs> it wouldn't be here long. We were going through the days back there of the hippie generation, and, and uh, while we liked it because the hippies loved bluegrass music, but many of them did indulge in things that uh, that we didn't approve of, I certainly didn't approve of, and uh, Randall and Roger didn't, and the family didn't. I really never saw them have to enforce the rule here. People knew the rule, people respected the Everett's, and they still do. I wish that that uh, they could have lived long enough to have seen all this stuff happen, you know. And uh, even before Mona passed away, uh, everybody was still jamming at the house like they do now, just like they do right now today, you know. And, uh, but she enjoyed it, I mean, everybody seemed like they just lived for the weekend. It's a rare thing, you know. I, I suggest everybody needs to get out and come and experience it at least once. You go in there and it's like you've walked back in time. You know, not just for the music, but for the, the way that people treat you. You know, everybody, all the doors are open. You know, it's not just a musical place. It's almost like a, it's, it's history, it's a museum. It's, you know, it's a bunch of things wrapped up into one. I think this is like a real kind of epitome of a traditional bluegrass venue and we play a lot of diverse venues but this venue just really like there's been such a history of bluegrass music in here. It's not a very big place but you get up on the stage and just realizing all the folks who've actually been and performed on that stage it's, it's really mind-boggling and, and just the music and there's just a feeling I think that music leaves behind that music leaves in a room and um, and the crowd is is so receptive and warm and just really, really sweet. Everyone who's been someone has been in, has been in this barn off and on over the years and uh, because of the uh, atmosphere, I guess, around this place. For me, there's not many places in the country that are like the barn. You go in there and there's always a full house and they're always really receptive to everybody that's there. The crowd really gives back to you, so I don't get too nervous about this show because you know that you're going to be, people are going to be four feet in front of you and just really give you the energy that you need to make it through the show. That's one of the things about coming to the barn. You go other places to see those professional groups, you may see them at a great distance, but you have no personal contact. We can shake hands with them backstage, you know. You can even jam with some of them. They'll even pick a tune with you, sing a tune with you. People just meet. And they get in these jam sessions, and you think when they kick it off that they've been, you know, playing it every day down the road. And some of them hadn't seen each other, ever, just met strangers. And that's what bluegrass is, you know. You can pick the instrument, and you know the stuff, you fall right in there. No matter how bad they play, or if they're just getting started, uh, they know they can come up here, and, and sooner or later, somebody will befriend them and show them stuff out in the house, you know, and, and get them started playing. and, and uh, it's just remarkable, you know, and, and I've seen some really good musicians come from there. There's a lot of people that come in here, uh, they fill up all the rooms, you know, a lot of night, a lot of Saturday nights. Um, uh, they, uh, they just come in, they get together and just uh, have a jam session. You know, you don't have to really play in a band, you can come in here and, and just see someone else sitting there and sit down and, and start singing and playing. They're in there now in every room in the house, and they're in the back, and sometimes they're on this porch and right here, and they used to be on the, uh, the other porch in the front. Every room in the house packed some nights. You can't really get in the place.
Big, big howdy to you. Welcome aboard. It's real good to have all you folks out here with us tonight. And uh, we hope you're going to enjoy yourself because we got a lot of picking to do between now and quitting time. So y'all just hang loose. It was a sad time because, you know, we were, when he first uh, became sick and he, and he got through all the surgeries he had because he had so many things wrong with him. You know, he had colon cancer, he had heart blockages, he had a kidney stone, he had asthma. I mean, he had all these things happen at one time. He had gotten so sick that he hadn't played in a couple of months. And uh, so I kind of got myself accustomed to seeing how it was going to be without him, you know. It's been, you know, real bad these last couple of years with Randall being sick, you know, and, and he would come and he would be, you know, and it would be a struggle for him to get up on the stage and sing, but he got up and sit down and sang. And he might not hold up and do two or three songs, but that was enough, you know, he enjoyed it and everybody else did. You know, it was it was hard for me to, to see him because I always knew Randall was, you know, always cutting up and joking around and everything. And um, the last couple of times I saw him, he was just really, really weak and, you know, um, he still had he still had that spit, and, you know, still had that fiery attitude, even all the way up till till he passed away. He's just a great person, a great MC. Uh, I've never heard any of the professionals that uh, were any better MC than what he was. And he just kept something going, and he just had the gift of gab. I don't know if nobody else that does this song but us. And, uh, but that's all right. We don't care for the do or not, you know. <laughs> He always talked and he made people feel like they were seeing a, a show. They weren't just there, just some guys there playing music. He got up there and he emceed and talked of his, as if he was emceeing the Grand Ole Opry. He embraced us from the beginning. And he used to be, you know, the host of the band, host of the show, and kind of the, knew every song. And I miss Randall. It was long, long ago in the moonlight. You were sitting on the banks on the street. Randall was really uh, Mommy Lester Flatt. Uh, he could, he just, something about him, him and the band, they always had a real tight band. He was pretty much a natural for this music. Roger and myself, we've been, we've been picking ever since about 1965, and we've been real fortunate to have some good musicians to pick with, and, and we still do, and we think it's uh, some of the fine boys you'll ever want to meet, I guarantee you, these fellas right here. Well, he just was a big influence, and uh, I sure do miss him, I really do. It was devastating for him, it really was, because, I mean, you know, like you said, you play music with somebody for 32 years, I mean, they know, because they played so well, so long together, they knew when somebody was gonna go bam, you know, they said, we're gonna do this song, and he just kicked it off. And he, right, right, Randall knew what Roger was gonna do, and Roger knew what Randall was gonna do. He had been sick for, for a good period of time, and, uh, but still, you know, it's, uh, it was a, it's a different feeling uh, once uh, he had left us there, you know, to, to get up on stage, uh, it, it, it's, it's a big change and really missed. It'd be just kind of like he done all this work and, and stuff up here for nothing, you know, all them years. So I've just been trying to keep it going the best I can, you know. When you lose someone, you think about it more. And uh, it was somewhat difficult, but uh, we, we knew, we felt like, and, and we knew that Randall would want us to carry on the show. A lot of people that come to this barn said they came to cure Randall. So it's been, uh, it's been good for me to see that they're still coming.
people know that they can uh, they can come here and 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 a lot of the guys out at the house they really they can play good enough that they can come out here. We let anybody play, and uh, but but they go stay out there and play. You know, they just like to jam, and they make new friends and learn new tunes. You know and stuff. And uh, I reckon uh, they keep coming back because it's a place together. You know. They meet and greet people and they talk to them and they develop friendships and, and and maybe that friendship's just here but every Saturday night they're here talking to each other. I love playing the music, it's a, it's a great hobby, uh, I really enjoy it, uh, but one of the main reasons that I come is just to, to help support uh, the Everett family. Uh, like I say, you know, they've been a, a great part in my life. I don't know, really I don't know of anyone, uh, any other family there that would open their home to strangers uh, just to walk in and stay all night long, you know, picking music there. There's not many places in the country that are like that. This is somebody's house. You know, that's my grandma's house. You know, I went there as a kid. I consider them uh, family and friends, I really do, because some of the people that's been coming here, I've been knowing 30 years. You know, and you know them, you know their children, and if they're sick or been sick, you know, I mean, you just know. It's, it's pretty amazing to, to be associated with people that you've known all that time, you know, and they're still coming back, you know, and their kids are playing. The average is just unique. I think more as people come in here, we're getting more people all the time. We had a lot of them out there tonight. First time they've ever been here, and they'll be back. Coming to a place like this is definitely refreshing. You know, it's a change of pace, and that definitely does something good for, for the soul and for the performer's palate. These are the things that make a town a town. You know, when you look, when you want to basically feel at home, this is what does that. You get you get people that come, they're the regulars, and then you have the new folks that come and are in awe. I have a great love for it because, you know, we've had it in the family all these years. As a matter of fact, I believe I would miss it very much if I didn't have it in my life. Honey, from my side. Roll on, buddy. Don't you roll this slow. How can I roll when the wheels won't go?
buddy from my side, buddy from my side. Well, roll on, buddy, don't you roll the floor. How can I roll when the wheels won't go? 